All right, so let me talk a little about interest rates. I've been talking about them for a couple of lectures now, um, but we really haven't, ex I haven't explained what they are, just stated them, given them. So let's dig a little bit, uh, you know, under the surface here. Um, so what are these things? So unfortunately, first of all, interest rates, as you've probably already surmised, they it's it's somewhat of a general term and uh, it can it can change depending on the use so you know there are, there are, this is true in a lot of finance there's there's a number of terms often for the same concept uh, and there are many concepts that use the same name so you know this is just a reality of the field so whenever you're talking with somebody you're reading something and you want to make sure that you're interpreting certain terms, you know, the way they are intended to be interpreted. So in our bond calculations, the market interest rate, which was the denominator of our time value analysis, is also known as the yield to maturity, uh, or simply the yield, if the bondholder holds the bond through the life of the bond. So, you know, in our five-year example case, uh, we bought a bond, and we're holding on to the bond for the entire five years. We're not going to sell it. So we're just co we're, we're collecting the payments, and eventually the bond's life ends, and we've held it to the maturity. So the, the yield that we got is known as the yield to maturity. Uh, and this is the discount rate that's in the denominator. So, uh, and I've been using this term. People use the term discount rate or the discount factor because we're discounting our future cash flows back to the present at this rate, right? That's straight from our time value of money discussion. All right, so, you know, to make it even more confusing, there's a lot of different interest rates in an economy. Um, the interest rate that the government is charged to borrow money is lower than the interest rate that I'm charged on my credit cards. Right? It's just, uh, I'm a lot riskier than the U.S. government. So the U.S. government can command really good rates. Um, in companies with good investment opportunities and a lot of cash, Google, Apple, Microsoft, uh, they're going to have lower interest rates for their corporate debt than companies with few growth opportunities and no cash or you know, brand new, unproven companies. Um, interest rates for the exact same security will actually change over time. You know, if you, if you look at a history of five-year bonds issued by the U.S. government over the last, you know, 20 years, and you look at them every year, how they've changed, the interest rates will have moved you know, throughout that time period. So there's a lot of different interest rates and, there's, there's a, and they're constantly changing. So um, it begs the question, you know, what, what's going on? What causes interest rates to be what they are? Um, so I'll address that shortly and briefly. Um, the, the, the main thing is in all these cases, the interest rate is going to increase when a given risk increases, and they should decrease when a given risk decreases. Right? There's some kind of risk and return um, link, which we talk quite a bit about next week. Um, but the logic is pretty straightforward. Right. In, in the face of multiple investment or lending opportunities, if we're not compensated for additional risk, then we're always going to put our money in the least risky opportunity. Right. So we need to be induced to invest or lend to a riskier situation by the promise of higher returns. Um, so we can actually think of an interest rate. This is now I'm. Uh, we, we can think of an economy-wide interest rate, or the, the interest the interest rate, right? The cost of borrowing money uh, is a function of a number of different factors. Um, the prevailing market interest rates, something known as the real interest rate, inflation risks or the inflation risk premium, uh, repayment or default risks, 
liquidity risks. Are we going to be able to um, to convert our bond into into cash if we need it? Is there an active market? Um, and there are other risk factors um, in bonds. A common one is reinvestment risk, um, but there's others. And you know, back in our example from the five-year bond, we we looked at when the interest rates were three, five, and seven percent. And so now we can go back and actually interpret why is the why might the market be assessing different rates at different times or for different companies. Um, so in, in this case we can uh, we can say that we might apply a higher rate, let's say the seven percent, if we're concerned that the company might not actually make the payments. Right? There's some kind of default risk. Uh, so we want to we want to we want to charge a higher rate for using our cash. And that's what the seven percent is, you know, compared to the five percent par. Um, or maybe we're concerned that inflation is going to increase, so we need some extra compensation. It has nothing to do with the company. The company is great, but we're concerned that uh, the overall economy might be having some problems. So we need to build that into our cost of lending. Um, and, and the 3%, uh, you know, maybe we believe that inflation is going to be decreasing. Uh, or maybe we believe the company has suddenly improved its position and uh, we're actually willing to charge them less for our capital. Uh, in, uh, ultimately, though, the interest rate reflects some kind of inherent riskiness that we have assessed of the company. So that's all I want to say about interest rates. Uh, we'll explore them a little bit more in the next module, and uh, that's actually when the readings are assigned. Um, but I, I wanted to address it a little bit here because I've been talking about interest rates and, and we really haven't hadn't unpacked them at all. All right, so some conclusions on bonds and interest rates. The lower the interest rate, the higher a bond, the lower the interest rate or the lower the discount rate, the higher a bond or really any securities price today. Right? This is, we saw that from the time value of money. Conversely, the higher the interest rate, the lower the bond price. They move in opposite. Um, high interest rates, now we can interpret this a little, high interest rates have built in additional compensation compared to lower interest rates. The additional compensation is going to relate to some type of additional perceived risk related to the underlying cash flow. Uh, 